About a year ago I bought this old box of tools for a couple of pounds in a farm sale and it had this old rusty axe in it. It was in pretty bad condition so I restored it, polished it all up, made it nice and sharp but I kept the same handle for some reason. I really like this axe, it's a carpenter's axe and I used it for quite a lot of things that it wasn't even designed for, chopped quite a lot of logs with it, chopped down a few trees with it when they needed to be cut down and the main thing that I used it for was for trimming down logs for when I wanted to put them on my wood lathe I could remove all of the bark with the carpenter's axe which was a lot more effective than actually doing it on the lathe. And this is the sort of thing that the axe is actually made for. Unfortunately, since I didn't replace the wooden handle, it started to break over time and I put some screws in it to try and hold it in place, but that was only temporary. So in this video, I want to try and make a solid new one. But I'm sick of all my wooden axe handles snapping in half. It's happened on a few in the past when you use them too hard and you don't use them in the proper way. And I know that if you make them properly out of some solid wood, they should last a very long time. But if I make one out of solid aluminium, then it's likely to last a lot longer. And I saw a video where Jimmy DeResta made one out of a solid bar of extruded aluminium, and that was very solid, and I doubt that that will ever break. So I wanted to do something similar by casting aluminium. This is the final axe handle that I came up with, and it's basically indestructible. There's no way that I'd be able to break it using my own strength. It's made from a solid bar of extruded aluminium down the centre, and it's got two sheets of phenoic plastic resin on either side, and both of these are really solid materials, much stronger than wood. As you can see, it's not made of cast aluminium, and my original plan was to cast some aluminium to, for the handle, and you'll see later on in this video how this goes wrong. The first step before I make any handles is to remove the old one, since it was basically broken anyway, and I also did a little bit of restoration to the axe again, and cleaned off some of the rust on the inside that I couldn't get to last time, because the handle was in place. As I mentioned earlier, I was originally planning on casting the axe handle out of aluminium so that I could have a solid metal handle. Obviously this didn't work, but I'm going to show the video of it anyway, because even though it failed, hopefully it will be quite interesting to see. For casting a handle, I needed quite a lot of metal, so I was just getting as much aluminium as I could find, just from different sources and mixing all of the alloys together. I melted all of the metal down in my homemade electric foundry, and I've got a video on this if you want to see how I made it. The casting method I wanted to use was lost foam casting, and this is basically a method where you carve your model out of foam, embed it in sand, pour on the metal, the metal evaporates all of the foam with the extreme heat, and then the foam model is replaced with metal which cools and solidifies. Seemed like the simplest method to cast something this large to me, so I just had to make a foam model of the handle. That wasn't too difficult because foam is really soft and it's quite easy to carve. I just used some green modelling foam and shaped it all on my belt sander. Next I got all of my ingots together, put them in the crucible and let it heat up as I prepared the mould. For lost foam casting, all you have to do is just put sand around the mould. I didn't really have a container long enough so I just stacked all these pipes together and put fine, killed dried sand on the inside. While I was preparing the mould, I was also filling up the crucible with new ingots of aluminium, and by the time I was done, it all melted on the inside. It only took about 20 minutes to melt even this quite large volume of aluminium. So now it's ready to pour. When you're doing lost foam casting, the pour is the most important part of the process, and unfortunately on this casting, this is where things all started to go wrong. It's really important that while you're pouring, you supply the casting with enough metal to fill up all of the spaces in the sand before the sand caves in and collapses, or before the metal cools and solidifies. Unfortunately, because of all of the flames that were coming off of this, it started burning my arm because I only had short sleeves on, and I had to stop pouring for a little bit, let it cool down a little bit, and then carry on pouring. It was only about one second, but it was enough to completely ruin the casting, as you'll see when I pull it out. 
So I pulled the casting out of the sand and it was all looking really promising and I was quite excited. Cooled it all down with some water and unfortunately when I actually looked at it and washed off all of the dirt, it had this weird interface where the sand had collapsed and the metal had folded in on itself and it was weak and I literally could just snap it off with my hands. Not wanting to give up on the idea, I then gave it a second attempt, recarved another handle out of some modelling foam and this time I actually made it a bit of a nicer shape and then embedded that in some sand again, remelted down the old handle with a few more new ingots and tried to cast it again. This time the casting went a lot better, I didn't burn myself and I carried on pouring in one continuous pour and hopefully it's worked better this time. It was all looking pretty solid when I pulled that out, apart from this one strange area at the top, and I'm still not quite sure what caused this, but I think because I didn't pour it quite fast enough, the aluminium and the crucible started to cool down, and as I poured it in, it wasn't fully liquid, which is a bit of a shame. So I thought the casting was still pretty solid on the inside, so I started smacking it off my bench vise to see if it would break or not. Unfortunately, as you can see, it was too brittle and weak, and it did snap. However, I still decided for some reason that it was worth pursuing this cast aluminium handle method and I thought that I could use the remaining part of the handle to make a smaller axe handle for this smaller axe which I had. So I trimmed it all down, shaped down the end so that it would fit on the inside of the axe that I'd made and then started pounding on the axe head onto the handle and it was quite a tight fit but I wanted it to be really really secure on the inside. As I was pounding it on, it seemed to be going pretty well and the axe head was slowly sliding into the handle. Unfortunately, as I was doing this, I could see some cracks already starting to form in the metal and once that had started, I realised that the alloy of metal that I was using was just absolutely crap, not, no impact resistance at all and it was far too brittle to be used for an axe handle. It, it literally just snapped in half. And then looking at the grain structure of the brake, you can see that the grains in the aluminium are absolutely massive and there's loads of porosity in the metal. So if I was going to do this again, I'd have to use a much better alloy of aluminium that's much more impact resistant, and I'd also have to probably degas the metal. I've realised now that cast aluminium is not the toughest material, it's quite brittle, so it's definitely not really the most suitable material for making an axe handle from. Extruded aluminium, on the other hand, is much more ductile, therefore much more impact resistant, and I just happen to have a bar of it that's quite thick and just the right width for making an axe handle from, so that's what I'm going to use to make this next handle. Hopefully this attempt works out better than the last three did. At this point I just started carving away at the metal using hand tools. I used a hacksaw to cut it off and then a furrier's rasp to remove most of the excess material. This is a situation where it would be ideal to have a bandsaw or something that can cut metal much easier than you can with a hacksaw. I tried using my jigsaw with a metal cutting blade but the metal was just too thick and the blade wasn't working very well. The aluminium as it is is much too thin to make a handle from, it wouldn't be comfortable and it would dig into your hands. So I'm going to laminate material on either side. I was originally thinking about making it from wood, but wood's not as strong as I'd like it to be to make an indestructible handle, and then I thought of phenoic sheeting. This is a type of plastic material that's been laminated together with different layers of paper, and it's actually incredibly tough and incredibly strong, and in some cases it's even tougher than aluminium itself, and it's also very impact resistant so I think it will make it an ideal material for this handle. Thankfully this material was easier to cut with the jigsaw than the aluminium was, so I could just cut it out using the jigsaw and a metal cutting blade. Once that's done, I've got the three layers in place and it's looking pretty solid already. Obviously while I'm using the axe, I don't want these three layers to delaminate, so I'm going to pin them in place and then peen over the pins. And I'm just going to use some 10mm stainless steel for the pins, normally you'd use brass or something because it's a little bit softer, but this is all that I've got. That requires me first to drill some holes through the middle. I tapered out the tops of the holes in the phenoic plastic using a larger diameter drill bit so that as the holes get shallower they also get a little bit wider. This means that as I peen over the pins they've got area to expand into and it means that it's definitely going to grip onto the metal very tightly. On top of pinning the layers together I'm also going to glue them together using resin so I roughed up all of the surfaces with a belt sander this is going to provide a little bit more surface area and make the glue bond stronger. 
I also then used a drill bit to put little indents on each of the materials which is going to give area for the glue to go once I squeeze it all together and hopefully that will make the bond even stronger. Once everything was in place all I had to do was then glue it together. I just used some polyester fiberglassing resin which will harden it over about a day. Once the glue had set, it was then time to paint over the ends of the pins. You basically just put it on an anvil surface and then smack it with the back of a ball peen hammer and it starts to round over the ends of the pins, make them fatter and lock all of the layers together very strong. It's quite a fun process. When it came to actually shaping the axe handle, it wasn't too difficult. The materials are both quite hard to carve by hand, so I used as much power tools as possible. It's quite important to suction up and get rid of all of the Fenoak resin plastic dust because I don't think it's very good for your lungs. So I was also wearing a dust mask at the same time. The actual shaping of the handle was pretty simple. I basically just rounded it over until it felt comfortable to hold in my hand and that's a pretty basic oval shape. Then it came time to shape the part of the axe handle which is going to slot into the axe head and originally this was way too thick so I had to remove a lot of material using my belt sander first. But I had to be also very careful not to make it too thin because that would completely ruin the interface between the handle and the head. After shaping with the belt sander I then moved on to hand rasps and files since you have a lot more control over the overall outcome of the shape and I didn't want to remove too much material. Fitting the handle was literally just a matter of filing off a bit of material and then hammering on the axe head, seeing how far it would go on and then removing more material where it was rubbing and catching. And then repeat that process over and over again until the handle slides all the way into the axe head. Once the handle was shaped properly and it was ergonomic in the hand and the axe head could fit onto the end of it, I then took a hacksaw and made a slot directly down the centre of the aluminium part. This is going to allow me to hammer in a wedge later on to expand out the aluminium and lock the axe head on place. I also made a shorter slot perpendicular to the previous slot which is going to expand the axe handle in the opposite direction and help to lock it in place even more. I'm going to make the wedges for the axe handle out of some hardened steel. This just means as I hammer them in place they're not going to deform that much and they should hopefully stay in the same shape. I ground the metal down into a wedge shape and made it thinner so that it would fit in the slots. The next step was to seat the axe head as deep onto the handle as I could before I then put in the wedges and once the axe head was all the way down onto the handle I could then start to hammer in the wedge from the top. After I'd pounded in the first wedge as deep as it would go I could then do the same thing with the second one which is perpendicular to the first wedge. I removed a lot of the excess material using an angle grinder and still even though I hammered everything down quite hard as you can see there's still quite a lot of gaps in the material so I'm going to use a ball peen hammer to try and peen out the excess metal right on the edge fill all of those gaps and make sure that everything is very secure. After about an hour of smacking the top of this with a hammer I think that the metal has folded out very nicely and it should stay on top of the handle very well. After a bit of clean up on the top side just by grinding away all of the excess material I could then move on to sanding the handle and it's important that the handle is very smooth so that you don't get any blisters when you use it for a long period of time. I 
I actually only sanded this handle to 240 grit using some wet and dry paper and that was enough to make the handle smooth enough that it fits really nicely in your hand and there's no abrasion on the skin. After sanding I gave the axe head a quick sharpen and then it's pretty much complete and it's ready to test out. The axe feels a lot heavier than it did before, however the centre of mass of the axe is still very much towards the head so it's still a very front heavy tool. Even though the axe is a lot heavier, it's still fine to swing and due to the extra mass it has a lot more impact when you hit pieces of wood. The true test of this axe will be when it comes time to chuck down another tree on a farm or something. I'm not going to cut down a tree just for this video since it's a bit wasteful and there's no need for me to cut anything down at the moment. But the handle feels really good in my hand and just from the testing that I've done for this video, it feels like it's going to be very solid and hopefully it'll last a lot longer than a wooden handle would have. If you're still here, thanks for watching this video so far and I hope that you can appreciate all of the effort that I've put into this one. It's been an especially long one, it's taken me ages to make since it took basically four attempts to make this handle. If you want more information on the projects that I'm making, you should look in the description down below where I've got links to my Instagram and my Patreon page. And if you're interested in helping support me make these videos and you appreciate all of the effort that I put into them, then maybe you could consider supporting me on Patreon.